This is Sky News with Gillian Joseph. Good evening. A callous and wretched murder. The words tonight of the senior police officer investigating the death of a four-year-old boy at the hands of the very people who should have protected and cared for him. Daniel Pelka died after Magdalena Wuchak and Mariusz Kreselek subjected him to months of starvation and savage brutality. And there are serious questions tonight over why teachers and social workers who saw the signs of abuse didn't act. From Birmingham Crown Court, Sky's Lisa Dowd reports. Looking anxious and painfully thin, this was Daniel Pelka on one of his last days at school. The four-year-old weighed just one and a half stone, a state a doctor later described as like a concentration camp victim. At school in Coventry, lunch boxes had to be locked away because Daniel was stealing sandwiches from other children. He ate from school bins and scooped up muddy pancakes which had been tossed into the dirt. He even tried to eat beans which had been planted in sand as part of a school experiment. A sibling who wasn't abused told how they hid snacks for their brother and tried to stop the beatings. Daniel's teacher, Lisa Godfrey, cried in the witness box as she recounted his desperation for food. He died at the hands of his Polish mother, Magdalena Wuszak, and stepfather, Mariusz Krzyżewek, who subjected Daniel to an incomprehensible cycle of cruelty and violence. This illustration shows the marks on Daniel's emaciated body. He had just a millimetre of fat on his chest. Doctors found 24 bruises all over him. A scan showed he'd suffered brain injuries. More than 30 hours after the blow to his head, the couple dialed 999 knowing Daniel was already dead. Oh, listen, my son, my son, he, he stopped breathing. He got four years, yeah? And, I, and we wake up and he stopped, he stopped, he stopped breathing. He sent me... OK, what's, some... he do, what's he doing now? Is he breathing? <laughs> no, he's not breathing. Okay. Nothing. All right, are you, are you right by him at the moment? A Birmingham jury was told that the youngster was starved for up to nine months. He died of a head injury. Daniel Pelka was a healthy young boy of four years of age when he started school in September 2011. By the time he died seven months later, he was a gaunt, frightened little boy who had gone through immense suffering, which was inflicted on him by his own mother and her partner. In March last year, Daniel's mother picked him up from what would be his final day at school. She emerges holding on to another child. Daniel was apparently ignored, left to scurry after her as she left the playground. At home, he faced a number of punishments. He was imprisoned behind a door with no handles. Daniel was fed salt when he asked for a drink. Sometimes he was forced to defecate on his mattress because he wasn't allowed to go to the toilet. He was also submerged in a cold bath. Text messages between the couple provided damning evidence. His mother wrote, Daniel is crying because he wants to eat. Another text read, Well, now he's temporarily unconscious because I nearly drowned him. I won't be hitting him, but if I hear when as he later wakes up, regains consciousness, then he's going back into the bathtub. I didn't let the water out. Daniel's natural father, who lives in Poland, welcomed the guilty verdicts and hopes the couple spend the rest of their lives in prison. If I could say something to Magda, I would tell her that I want her to spend the rest of her life in prison to rot that I want her to suffer the same as Daniel had to suffer, to make her feel like she made him feel, and the same for her partner, to make them not see daylight ever again. Police don't know why they tortured and murdered Daniel. Why do you think this happened to Daniel? Well, we've never established a motive, um, and of course, um, neither of the parents will admit to actually killing Daniel, so of course we've never managed to establish that because, in my opinion, they're both deeply dishonest. 
There's nothing in the background to suggest that they would ever have committed this sort of offence. Um, absolutely, you know, nothing to trigger it. As I say, there's, we've never established a motivation. So, you know, nothing that would excuse even, uh, you know, a small amount of, of, um, of the abuse that Daniel suffered. Um, so, no, it's a complete mystery to us. Now the trial is over, a serious case review will look at whether school staff who saw Daniel with two black eyes or anyone else could have done anything else to save him. He was known to social services and police and he saw a doctor a few weeks before he died. School officials in Coventry have created a memorial area for Daniel, a bench with a fruit tree either side to remember Daniel's love of nature. Why those closest to Daniel didn't love him may never be known. Lisa Dowd, Sky News, Birmingham. Tonight, the mother of Magdalena Wuchak, who was found guilty today, has spoken exclusively to Sky News about the verdict. She talked to Sky's Katie Stallard at her home in Poland and told her of her shock and sadness at what her daughter has done. Shock. 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 To się po prostu przeżywa, przeżywa w tak okrutny sposób. Wie pani jak to boli. Jak to bardzo boli. To jest ból, który można sobie wyleczyć, prawda? Czymś to jest ból zupełnie, no nie. Ja się dowiedziałam jeszcze od córki, tylko dowiedziałam się od córki, ale krótko ze mną rozmawiała. No, że Daniel nie żyje, ale strasznie płakała i, i, i już później nie miałam kontaktów, bo policja właśnie aresztowała. Później się już dowiedziałam, tak jak mówię, o całej tej tragedii. Natomiast z nią nie rozmawiałam przez telefon tyle, bo ona strasznie płakała. No, stała się w ogóle, to w szoku dostaliśmy. No to tragedia, prawda? No wielka tragedia, prawda? Ja byłam w sklepie. I jak wróciłam, to mąż siedział na fotelu i, i strasznie po prostu płakał. Strasznie. Well, the tragic circumstances surrounding Daniel Pelka's death raise serious questions about why more wasn't done to stop his killers when the signs of cruelty were there to see. It's certainly not the first case where the warning signals have been missed and a child has died. So how can our system still be failing? Sky's Tom Parmenter reports on the lessons that aren't being learnt. They were all failed by adults. Victoria, Peter, Kyra, Leah, Ryan, Keanu, and now Daniel. So why does it keep happening? Well, I think the key to this is the concept of denial. We're all aware that these cases exist. These children come into contact with people during the course of, of their work, so teachers, social workers, healthcare, nurses, doctors. And also, these children have neighbours, they have extended family, they have relatives. And we're seeing the facts, we're seeing the evidence that's in front of us, but we're, we're just not acting on it to the extent that we should be. Sometimes it sparks protest, but every time we see similar backstories and hear the same old phrases. There are a lot of lessons to be learnt, are being learnt. What could have been done differently is what we will use to learn. This and the other serious case reviews that are going to be published in the future must be learning tools. I mean, the worst thing that we can do, which is what betrays families like this family and this little boy, is be complacent. The customary serious case review for Daniel Pelker will now take place in Coventry. We need to ensure that we approach the prevention of child abuse on a number of different fronts. And it's really horrendous that, you know, we're, we're discussing yet another case like this. But a great deal of social work is unseen. When it works, we don't hear about it. I believe that things are improving. Um, I couldn't do what I'm doing if I didn't think that was the case. To put it in perspective, about an average of 52 child deaths in a year. Um, that's obviously 52 too many, clearly. But to again look at, there are about half a million referrals. Protecting the most vulnerable isn't easy, but that can't be an excuse for failure. Daniel Pelker's mother and her boyfriend will be punished like all the other killers. But for the children, justice is always too late. Tom Parmenter, Sky News.
And for more detail about that horrific case, you can go to Sky News for iPad, where you can read the text messages sent between the two killers, see a timeline of the attempts health workers made to intervene, and get the personal views from our correspondents who followed the tragic details in court. Sky customers can access the app for free using their Sky ID. And as you can see, anger over that case is featuring in the morning papers. We'll take a look at what's on the front pages in our press preview at 11.30. Tonight I'm joined by Times columnist Matthew Syed and LBC presenter Julia Hartley Brewer. And don't forget, so you don't miss a thing, you can now series link the press preview on your Sky Plus box. So breaking news.